Grey and golden plover are two related waders that can be confused with each other, especially if seen out of context or if a juvenile or first winter bird is encountered. Both are similar in size to a lapwing, although more elegantly proportioned. Grey plover breeds in the Arctic and has never bred in Britain, but with lingering birds in the spring or early returning non-breeding birds, it can be found here in every month, although the species is most common from late summer to spring with a maximum of around about 400,000 birds. Grey plover is found almost invariably in coastal habitats, preferring salt marshes, pools and the shoreline, and it is usually encountered occurring in ones or twos. The birds appear aloof or even lazy as they slowly make their way along the mud, stopping every so often to tip forward and pick up a morsel of food. If seen in summer, the birds will be in breeding plumage, and they are a striking sight. The back and wings and top of the head are spangled with black and white. The belly, chest and cheeks of the males is jet black and the sides of the head and neck are white. Stunning. Females and molting birds have a less clear cut plumage with white and grey feathers scattered throughout. As the birds move into winter plumage, the back, whilst retaining the checker pattern, becomes smoky and the belly becomes whitish and the rest of the bird's smoky grey. Surprisingly nondescript considering the breeding finery. Confusion arises when young and first winter birds are encountered, as the smoky colouring is infused with a yellowish buff, distinctively different, especially if standing near adults. And how can you tell that this isn't a golden plover? Golden plover is a slightly smaller, daintier bird, and it's found throughout Britain and Ireland, right through the year. In the breeding season, about 49,000 pairs breed in open upland habitats and around about 150,000 birds winter around our coasts, marshes and farmland. They often form sizeable flocks then and are frequently found together with lapwings. At this time of year, the birds are all over golden buff colour with darker backs and paler bellies. Adults and young birds are very similar and young grey plover never approaches the golden tones of golden plover. On the ground, golden plover also seem dumpy to me, relatively heavy bodied and small headed. As the birds begin their molt into breeding plumage, the belly, foreneck and cheeks develop varying amounts of black with a white border. The males are much more crisply marked than the females. And birds from the far north are the most stunningly marked of all. These northern birds can be encountered on high ground in late spring before they head back to their arctic breeding grounds. British breeding birds will often be encountered in the hills, standing atop a distant ridge or hillock, stretched up warily watching you. Their single drawn out pee call is desolate and plaintive, one of the characteristic sounds of our uplands in spring. If approached, the birds will take to the air the transformation from a dumpy bird on the ground to an agile bird in flight with narrow pointed wings is remarkable. Regardless of age, sex or plumage, golden plover always show white underwings. The black belly of a breeding plumage adult stops well short of the wings. Their smaller size and pointy wings will often alert you to their presence amongst flocks of flying lapwing in winter. When stretching their wings on the ground as they do occasionally, or more often as they take off, Grey plover display one of their more distinctive features, black armpits, or more correctly, axillary feathers. In breeding plumage, the black belly flows onto the underwing, but even in winter plumage, these black armpits are retained, and these can be surprisingly easy to see as the bird flies over or banks in flight.